some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. I'm back and I'm mad. Good evening. Hello, everybody. Dutch, uh, Panzer Kaput, Hazy Boy, Crispin. Uh, what's going on, everybody? Yeah, sadly, it looks like um, our dear friend and leader, Jerry, has um, fallen asleep in his chair, I guess. <laughs> I really don't know where he is, but uh, yeah. Mm. Tough luck. <laughs> Happens for the best of us, I'm guessing. Uh, I, I imagine that he got home, had his dinner, and then had the same problem uh, that I have when I'm eating. I just drizzle off and uh, am never too going to return from that. Uh, let's see. Since I don't have anyone talking to me today i might as well put some background audio on if i can find something hold on i know i've saved some things for this kind of occasions uh, where are those rotten little playlists background music uh let's go with Oh, let's go with this. I think that's a bit loud. How about that? Yeah, I think we can work with that. So! What I thought what we'd like to do today is uh, some old school heavy hang-up. What do you think of that? Let's see if this works. So this is the original What Are You Painting Now thread. I went back to pages and we can go along and just still loud music. Oh, but now, is it better? Or still too loud? Right. So, uh, this is the original Hobby Hangout uh, idea back then, where we just. Uh, myself turning up again. Hold on. Let's go. This could be potentially better. Old school hazy boy, yeah. So this is the the uh, what you're painting now thread, and there's some things in there. Hold on. Also, ah, in shot again. <laughs> now I need to switch between browsers to see what, actually what it is. So the first one this is brush stroke, obviously painting. Horrible details on something that's uh, a space marine. Yeah, that eyes, those eyes are painted. Let's see. No, don't save as. Just open the bloody thing. Why doesn't he bloody open it? Oh, somebody made additions to. Uh, for the WordPress installation, so we can't just open up in a new window. Uh, again, enough size. Yeah, giving. I'm guessing that's an ordinary 28 mil figure. That's a level of detail that's almost unsettling. <laughs> At least to me. Well, now I don't think I could get that level of detail done in anything. I was more than happy that I was able to uh, get my eyes done on the Dunkledorf Mini that Lena so kindly sent me. By the way, hi Lena. <laughs> Jerry says hi, I think. <laughs> yeah, Panzer, he's professional, that's... 
that's undebatable. Also, uh, today's drink is a Guinness Extra Stout, because I was lazy. Crispin, if uh, Brushlow would have taken art class, I don't think he would have started painting Space Marines. So, let's see what's next. Uh, just some talking people, we want pictures. Also, just in case you want to join in on the fun locally to have a bit of picture, there's the forum link. Well, if he had taken art class, he would possibly be now working somewhere at a register in a supermarket or something. He wouldn't have time to paint minis. <laughs> yeah, but Panzer, you took art class and you also are a public servant and you paint uh, covers for books and stuff. Tuffy! Tuffy, we need your Games Workshop ranting today because Jerry somehow is missing in action. Uh, three hours ago he said he's on the train and he would be there, but I guess he's fallen asleep in his chair. Oh, and speaking of stand-in, Jerry, have you not seen the video uh, that he done, uh, did with this Kickstarter preview prototype box? That's the first time I've seen a box making Jerry look small. That's just insane. <laughs> Imagine he had hidden free behind that box and not the other unboxing. That would be hilarious. Yeah, Dutch trains tend to break down, but since Jerry has a uh, smartphone with him, he could have uh, put up uh, what you're calling it. Um, he, he, he would have sent a message that he would be late, I guess. Big box. Oh, the water link now. Uh, let's see if I can find that. Oh, hold a sec. Uh, where was it? I can't even tell if it, if it was yesterday or the day before. My timeline is totally busted with ancient videos <laughs> from Beasts of War. Uh, Guardians of Fire prototype, that's the one. So we might as well take a sneak peek together so that everybody knows what I'm talking about. Where is it? So can you see what I mean? <laughs> that box is almost, I, I guess, a quarter of his size. That's an enormous box. <laughs> I think he could potentially fit free inside there, but yeah, <laughs> it's insane. It's it's so big it doesn't even fit under the closed capture cam. It's just gigantic. <laughs> yeah, in the days the ogre box comes to mind as well. So that's what made me really, really chuckle. <laughs> Back to people doing hobby. So Blinky is doing grayscale from probably what looks like to be his hobby now, 3D printed miniatures. Uh, okay. Set 1106 does interesting tiny furniture, Sitting Falls Kickstarter. So we have a bathtub and 
what looks to be either a sink or a very high seated toilet. <laughs> Could be a shitty suit, could be a washing basin, or whatever it's called. Lovely brownish wood colour. Some very drunken... Oh, well, these suddenly don't open? What the heck? <laughs> oh, I guess he embedded them. Yeah, Reaper Mini Forum. They do look a bit too brownish for my taste. Wait, maybe you went a bit overboard on the washes and. Uh, could have used a little less. <laughs> oh, in case anybody hasn't noticed, uh, the Army Painter has launched a new, her, their new homepage and it looks quite good, you, especially compared to the old one they had from way back when. Oh, Blipvertus is doing tiny square, 6mm Battletech terrain, though I couldn't tell you what that is. Any idea? On 6mm they could be very small apartments. weird. Sadly he doesn't tell terrain by death ray designs but not what that actually should be. Hazmat. Hmm. Could be. Still looks weird. Yeah, roadblocks, I'm... Oh! Yeah, now I get what you mean. Yeah, that's totally... Totally a, a thing. So a... Some sort of cloth just filled with whatever's laying around to improvise a... Some sort of uh, wall. That does look a bit weird. Maybe it's just a giant version of Tetris for the Battle Max to play. Now I want to see a diorama with that. Battletex playing Tetris. <laughs> Steve! Still working at that point in time. We're on November 22nd last year. On the way there. We already had nagged him about his wonky saber and... Uh, uh, he didn't really care to, to straighten it because he said it was a uh, customer job. So don't break things they don't pay you to make correct. Oh, Panzer, how should I know what they use in Iraq and Afghanistan? I've never been there. <laughs> yes, no banana man for scale Dutch. Sadly, I really need to find myself one of those and then make some kind of image pop in for here and what I learned over the last weekend where there was no XPS XLBS and weekend and I was going through the archives of uh, on tabletop the picture on the unboxings from John with the what's in the box is ancient the same picture they've used for at least nine years in a row now. So, Lloyd, I know you're not watching. Maybe 
just up the graphics a wee bit. <laughs> but at the same time, don't change anything as long as people are liking it. It is a good picture, but yeah, you can see it's John, but it's a different John from today. <laughs> Completely different. Now, back to what are people painting. This looks hauntingly like the same miniature that... Um, oh, or maybe Hazy... Uh, Blinky was just comparing those pictures for somebody, so maybe it's not his to paint. So Razor is doing a minor and herb gatherer. Which is an odd combination. Mining is underground and herbs usually don't grow underground. Unless you count mushrooms. Oh yeah, the early shows were very Kim's Workshop orientated. That's not even... that doesn't even come close. It was a bit... Uh, partially hard to bear. <laughs> So, Razor... Razor? Why is this many off-center? I don't know about you lot, but I always am trying to make sure that when I place a mini on a base, that it's as much centered as possible so that there's the least amount of overhang outside the base to just make sure it doesn't interfere with anything else. Is that just me or is that the way usually people are doing it? Gabions is what the military use. I'm ref think you're referring to the, uh, what should I call it, the terrain we just saw. Let me see if I can open that link. Oh yeah. They absolutely look like that. Haven't seen those before, must to be honest. Yeah, it's also when when centering the mini, it's more, less likely to topple over when you uh, nick it. I, I don't think it's as bad on this miniature, but I've seen people using standard bearers with a giant standard and they're on the edge of of the uh of the base and i always wonder why isn't that thing toppling just by looking at that also why make yourself more difficult to to carry things around your abyssal dwarfs are they on round or on square bases the days because that's one benefit of round bases. If you make some kind of unit, you can turn them a bit to make it fit. If you don't do that on square bases, you're basically fucked. No. Oh. So while assembly or already trying to wiggle it, I guess. That's a Blitvertus again. And here we see how the terrain comes along, and this looks pretty much like what uh, Panzer just showed me on for us in, in the link. That actually looks a lot better, especially now with a uh, with a proper mech. Oh, I hate this add-on. doesn't even want to play nice. Well, it doesn't want to play nice. So we have to make do with these small pictures. But overall, that's an interesting piece of terrain. Though I think the, the Jeeps and the Humvees are a bit... Uh, well, not wrong, but don't fit the narrative. 
for some reason. Timberwolf, yes. With a very irritating pinkish base and very neon brass. Also, can you imagine if that mech that is a bit of... that's six mil what kind of bush this tuft is <laughs> it would be enormous you could hide whole families in there without them ever being seen again yeah also they, they are a bit oversized the, the vehicles trim your bushes lady trim your bushes or maybe we are wrong maybe it is the bush Maybe it's a shrubbery. Uh, I can't tell what kind of Mac that is because I can't see any insignia, but I think it's from the uh, current range of clan invasion. If it's an official one, I can't tell from this angle but the amount of detail in that set is very interesting Elysium 64 I think we had uh, his project on some time again uh, it's an interesting take of a mini <laughs> a snow bear pelt on a very chunky built person Reminds me a lot of uh, Boris. Though Boris wouldn't wear that much uh, trousers, I guess. And speaking of Boris, I got confirmation today about uh, my order from Paris Immunitiv being in the way. At least I hope that's how I have to understand what uh, Andy was writing. <laughs> Is it? I I know uh, I'm probably the same as you lot are, but I always feel it um, weird when people doing business apologize for something they had. Um, uh, how to word it? So basically, Andy did say before Christmas, after Christmas, he would take until the 5th of January off so I couldn't expect some delay in ordering so why now apologize for it I knew that he wasn't producing between the years um, would you be annoyed if you were ordering from a shop that said no orders will be processed before the 5th of January and six days later your order is on your way keeping in mind that he is casting all minis fresh. No, I didn't get any Boris Demon Sub. I'm not going to paint long dong schlongs. At least not as long as my daughter still will ask you. <laughs> and that will be some time until she's uh, leaving. Yeah, Panzer, I get that it's polite, but. <sighs> That's a bit weird. Duck the fuck, welcome! So... The miniature that Elysium 64 has painted is... RuneQuest. At least, he links to his RuneQuest project. Harek the Berserk. And he does look very nice. He painted the eyes on the dead teddy bear. Which is a bit odd, but there you go. Gunda the Guilty. Well, what she's guilty of? Terrible hairstyle? Improper headgear? Hmm. And the next one is... A duck. I'm not sure that's a duck. The beak looks wrong. So, uh, 
Is that a duck? Chat? I'd say no. It's some kind of bird, but it's not a duck. At least, it's not looking like a duck. No, that's no duck. <laughs> some, some different water bay, uh, swimming able bird, but not a duck. Interesting feather colors, though. Some geezer is doing a what he's calling a moody Soviet officer in some dog of unusual size. Either those dogs are big or the Soviet officer is very small. Also, he doesn't look like an officer, he looks more like a bouncer. Kuchabura. What the hell is Kuchabura? <laughs> oh, the head is too big for Putin. Interesting set of dogs, though. By some geese. Let's see what's on the next page. Oh! Whole flings! Whole fling adventure party! Oh, and that picture is actually a bit bigger. Ah, Kukabura Osford. Okay, so I'll have that a look. <laughs> I don't know why halflings with a helmet always seem, at least the full facial helmet, look wrong. Because they, they're already that low on the ground that the only actual hit they should be fearing would be some blunt force trauma from above. Nothing from the left or right. The other day is hide the food and your smoking weeds. And, and maybe the ale as well. I like the very uh, woody or wood like greenish color scale. But I always wondered why Tolkien made them barefoot. There's no reason for, for a sentient species that wears clothing to not wear feet, uh, shoes. <laughs> At least to my mind. But a very nice paint job and the, uh, the weathering on the shield is also very, very nice. Let's see what next. A demonic snowman with a top hat. Uh, <laughs> uh, why does a demonic snowman need a top hat? Or is this possibly not a demonic? Hmm. No, it's not a demonic snowman. It's a wear snowman. That's why he's look looking like he's got fur and stuff. A wear bear, but in snow form. I'm pretty sure that's it. What are people thinking sculpting these? And who is buying them? Except Ori and uh, Jerry. Because I'm pretty sure if Jerry were here, he would say something along those lines. Like, yeah, I've got one of those somewhere, at least. Sidger! They're starting the Elite Edition starter set. So this is 40k. Tuffy, that's your cue to rant and rave a bit. 
That's a very interesting kit bash for that unique sergeant. Let's see if we can impeculate him. Yeah, we can. So, can anybody make out where the green stuff is? <laughs> Quote of the day, Panzerkapo. 40k is a very nice and clever game. Isn't there a, a page you were just looking at for uh, silver bayonet minis because you're running low on Baron's War drink? Yeah, I guess the beard is, is the green stuff and the red is a generic kit bash. I, I still need some kind of excuse to, to practice with my new hobby saw. But I don't have any project lying around that I could, uh, could do. Yeah, Panzer, I've seen your influx of pictures and um, your video is uh, is in the watch later list I'll have a look see and be annoying cunt in their comments uh, I just had a thought what was I thinking can't remember <laughs> let's see what's coming next oh again him a more hobbits for a Middle Earth diorama. Hmm. These don't look familiar. Maybe those were the ones he used for the. Ah, uh, I guess that's the the. Uh, if you lot remember the 360 spinning diorama he did. I was just going to say I don't recognize these characters, but I'm guessing they're not meant to be characters from the books, quote unquote movie. Uh, he doesn't say from where they are. Oh, and here we have that weird guy that's always somehow popping up in comments. Iron Steve finished the diorama of the Vader on uh, 4th of December. And I'm really honest to God. I really need to say that. Steve, you're a fucking cunt. <laughs> a talented fucking cunt and bastard. Thank you for your attention. Yeah, the, the, the sculpting on that miniature is very nice. And while we're on the subject of Star Wars, tomorrow is the next episode of uh, The Book of Boba Fett. I'll be very much watching that the minute I get home. And also, please give a listen to the latest uh, Imperial Interlude that Ralph and I recorded on Sunday, and I somehow managed to squeeze out on Sunday as well because YouTube being YouTube, again, not rendering stuff in a timely manner, so it got very late. But you don't need to watch it on YouTube, you can also go to iTunes and most popular, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, podcatchers to just listen. Or you go to the project page and uh, click the direct link and save it to your hard drive. Also, tomorrow... Yes, as Panzer is rep uh, reminding me, it's Mumble in the Jumble. Mumble in the Jungle, that's the wording. Where we'll be talking shite on Discord. You all know the link, I won't put it down again. And we'll have a laugh, I guess. See who's hanging around. But enough of talented people. Let's look at dead people. Tiny Furnishers Harvards of War Casualty Miniatures. Hmm. Player, are those skeletons really dead? Game Master? Sure. Uh, never trust your Game Master.
Oh, those look nice, especially on the carpet blanket, like a bit of a desert. And I, I always like um, when skeletons have some kind of armor to them and are not just naked skeletons. I guess if you're a uh, a civilian and you get buried just with your clothes, those rot away at some point in time, but most armor and weapons, I guess, would survive a lot longer than you and your clothes. <laughs> yeah, the right one, on, uh, the, the lower right one really looks, looks like he's walking uh, or, or crawling across the table. Maybe that's why the player is so suspicious and asks if, if they're really, really dead. Blitvert is working on Blood and Valor armies. Uh, German East Africa force. So, Asia Core, Millions of Brigade games. People, can't you decide on one system, please? <laughs> And why do they look like they always uh, almost are sunk into something? The mud is getting them. I think on these miniatures. There's a bit of a discrepancy for my taste. These soldiers are lying in the mud, but at the same time, the uniforms look very, very uh, clean. And I highly doubt that that would be possible if you throw yourselves in the mud for an attack. So, are those. 28 or are those 15 mil? I guess 28. And maybe the uh, the backdrop, the plants. I, I know it's very easy to uh, just use these plastic plants, but maybe give them uh, give them a spray with varnish as a foundation, and then just slobber some wash over that. At least that's what uh, Mel, the terrain shooter, always tells people to do. And I think that could work very well. Tone it a bit down. German tropical uniform? Didn't he say those were British? Mm. Oh no. Uh, German gunners, you're right. Yes, and I'm, I'm aware how weird it is for a German not to know his own history in military, but frankly, military isn't a thing I really give a damn hoop about. And Henri also is painting eyes on tiny hobbits and is managing to do so. Why? Need to paint. So you lot out there, what are you currently painting? I know Panzer is frantically looking for stuff to paint because he's finished his Baron's War. Whatever Tuffy is currently painting will be done within the hour. Crispin, how is your next ship project coming along? Or is that something you will tell us about tomorrow in Mumble of the Jungle? Comstar Battletech. Yeah, th those are nice miniatures. I'm still very much undecided on how to paint the battle mechs that I've got from the clan invasion box. On the one side, I'd like to give them justice, especially for the named models, to make them look like they are 
uh, shown and depicted in the novels, but at the same time, uh, if everybody does it, they all look the same, more or less. So why bother? Th though I like this white and red contrasty scheme, I don't think I, I would go that route. I think I would make something more weird, like the Judge Dredd Battle Mac paint scheme I did on on one of my uh, Battle Macs. The days is gluing a lot of halflings. Demon Sub is doing terrain and waffle fences. Hazy Boy is finishing the WWX startup set. Back to Marvel Crisis Protocol Hulkbuster. Tuffy is painting. 2000 points, Age of Sigma. So I'm guessing she'll be done within the hour. And Demon Sub is working out how to glue pens. Go. Scores? What the bloody hell are pen scores? Ah, uh, my. Sorry for showing my lack of uh, uh, vocabulary. Let's see. Uh, there isn't anything the net can't show you. Oh, now I see. Um, what's the material you're? You're gluing them to is it wood or just some uh, resin because I think if you just take ordinary PVA that should be more than enough MDF yeah then I would go PVA because it, it with, with MDF PVA fixes it fixes very much uh, it has a very high uh, bonding surface and if you smush it a bit into the sponge and then put it on the MDF, it should hold a bit better because you got more glue in the sponge. That's all theory though. Might give it a try. I, I don't think you would have enough contact surface for something like um, liquid glue. Some, some gel-like maybe working. A multi-purpose glue, yeah, could work, but those tend to be very expensive if you use them in, in larger scale. Or maybe um, something like spackle or something. Something you would need, or, or caulking. You need something that has the ability to go into the, the uh, let's call them fibers of the brush, uh, the, the, the sponge adhere to there because you're not having two flat surfaces bonding or you could just use nails with very big heads on them but I guess then you lose the, uh, the structure the texture you want with, with those pan cleaners so yeah Fulcrum Welding is always an option, especially on an MDF. So, I guess somebody already potentially has invented something that will weld to MDF. The King Crab really looks like Blitverter's nice done job on Battle Max. Razor again, doing Dungeon Saga plastic zombies. And Am I the only one thinking of Michael Jackson's thriller when seeing rows of zombies doing all the same pose? I mean, it's... <laughs> I think this is thriller all through. Ah, 
fetching on fire would be interesting if you want to go for rune terrain. I had seen somebody else post some, I think it was a face page, or could also be in the Discord project channel, where somebody had uh, showed different zombies and they were also from a board game having similar posing and this just looks like a dance group. <laughs> Let's see. What's coming up next? Dancing Knights. Oh, ancient games workshop. Skelly Bobs. I like those. I like those very much. Uh, the the mo I think the most reason well, the the. Uh, the main reason why I like these uh, Scully Bobs is because they remind me of uh, the board games uh, versions of um, Hero Quest. They, I, they, they don't look so flimsy, also. They, you wouldn't be too scared to drop them. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, very. Ah, uh, oh, what's his face again? Harryhausen. Harryhausen feeling. And coming back to Harris Images for a minute now. I really want your skeleton Kickstarter. I want those guitar playing creepy skeletons. <laughs> Andy, please get them done. I'll probably go bankrupt when he actually launches the skeletons with all the things he has already uh, sculpted and previewed. It'll be mental. And also on this picture we see the only proper use for those dreadful turn cap paint pots from Games Workshop it's released. Just look at them, so much character. And the best thing about skeletons is you don't need much paint. <laughs> They're the most forgiving thing to paint if you're starting. Just take the one, the second from the left. He's bare bones. <laughs> you just push, paint him, bleach bone. Give him a wash, do some dry brushing highlights, and then paint the the, the spear and the, the shield, and you're done. They, they just look nice. And those were would be skeletons if I were to would be able to, to uh, get hold of them that would I think fit perfectly Frostgrave. And if Games Workshop were to re-release those miniatures, I actually would be tempted to buy something from them. I'll be honest. <laughs> Duck the Fuck has done, in December, something that is Silver Bayonet. Uh, I guess this is a not really feeling well infantryman. <laughs> Looks a bit uh, on the malnourished side. I think he needs some brains. <laughs> Thurston, we have a problem. Now what? My beer is empty. Don't panic. All is fine. Don't panic. Don't panic. All is fine. Don't panic. 
turret 28, was it, I think? <laughs> Dad, have a good one. I hope you'll have more luck with your bike wheel exchange tomorrow. Uh, what's not to love about Napole Napoleonic zombies? Um, I'd say the headgear. I really don't like the hats. <laughs> so, that's one page we did. On to the next. Taurus is doing... Tiny, tiny fighting man. I might be wrong, but those look like six mil elder. Can anybody confirm or deny? <laughs> also, I think it was Taurus in the Discord who annoyingly reminded me of that one guy doing 6mm unofficial Star Wars miniatures and I'm really tempted but it's a bit of money <laughs> and there's no game to go with it ah <laughs> uh, would I ever have, uh, if I win the lottery, I might. And by winning the lottery, I mean really winning it. Ah, Blipwork just is back again with more battle tech. Conventional hovercraft. See, now these hovercrafty vehicles are more like of what I've uh, read about in the books the past year. Because I'll have been reading Battletech novels for the last year and a half now. I'm currently somewhere on novel number 21. And just as a coincidence, uh, if I can get them without breaking anything. Still two more to come. Oh! That's interesting. Let's see if I can show you a lot that. Hang on. Um, uh, you recognize the paint scheme? We, I think that's the one we just saw. Very interesting. So these are the next two I'll be reading. And I'm pretty sure at least two or three in the audience, if they haven't left, have already read those way back in the day. Tell me I'm wrong. Also, I like that he's not only painting the newer versions of the Max, but also the old ones. Though I must admit, some of his this early sculpts look horrendous. <laughs> a tree, but it's not a large. Kingdom Death Lonely Tree. Well, it's only partially a tree, so I think we might get something later on, potentially. And yeah, Pants, you should read those books. And the, the good thing is, uh, if you go and uh, hunt them down used, they are really cheap. At least mine were reasonably priced. Also, given the fact that they are, God knows how old, 
pretty decent shape though. Where did I put my beer? There it is. Here we have Svbo as as we bow. I don't know. Doing uh, Star Wars Legion. And again, this is something where I think he went a bit overboard with the uh, with the grasses. Maybe it's just me, but I think it, he went a bit too far with the tufts. I think he, if he had gone with a with bases being only tufts, so that they would look like a giant patch of grass, then I would have liked it a bit more. But then again, uh, he he's going for a scarif theme, and these troopers are actually. Um, so sculpted that they look like the ones from Hoth. So he did the, the same that I did with mine and used winter gear clothed soldiers and just painted them up to fit in, in a green environment. Though I went for the green camouflage look. But all, overall, they do really look nice. Well, like, maybe not so bad after all we would need a better report to make better judgment of that yes a better report yes palindra so this is one i think it's safe to say that jerry dragged here <laughs> she actually uh introduced herself in the uh forum thread for new users and yes our, on tabletop has a forum with a thread for new users just in case you didn't know and I think he uh, lured her in from a Kings of War group from Facebook and by the looks of it she actually knows what she's doing painting wise because that's a hell of a clean paint job on those little buggers. I'm not sure if those are supposed to be snow foxes or just regular foxes with white fur. But they do look nice. Oh no, Taurus again! Doing 3D printed trolls. If those are meant to be scaled for 10 mil, well, then those are quite chunky boys. The base reminds me a bit of a wafer. Now I crave some wafers. Well, are they really tiny or just far away, Panzer? And Andre77. Uh, Free Boaters Fate. Brotherhood. That's a game I rarely see on uh, on, on Tabletop and Beast of War, etc. and all the other non-German groups. Uh, is Freebooters Fate such a niche system outside Germany? Because I know the rules are translated into English, so there shouldn't be a hindrance. Or are they just so hard to come by the minis themselves? But I, I really like the the, uh, the way the battle system works in, in that game, because it's completely devoid of dice. There's no dice involved whatsoever. You can't find the minis. Well, usually you just... Pre-Brexit, you could have just ordered them from Rebooters Fate directly, usually. And they wouldn't have cost you an arm and a leg. But then again, we're post-Brexit, so... Yeah. So, the day has heard the day, but doesn't know much about the game. It's basically you 
a, a small skirmisher where you have your very small uh, group of piratey crewmen. Uh, it's Middle Evil Fantasy. You have your regular humans and weird factions. There's uh, one faction that's very likely leans towards the French called the Debon, and we also have some kind of voodoo force, and then there's uh, the Brotherhood, which is uh, let's call them Assassin's Creed guys, and we have goblins. And you have your little skirmish group, and you simply fight each other for treasure. A bit like Frostgrave, but in the Caribbean. And the game works in the way that if you add, and this is all from memory, which is bad at the moment, um, if you have a fight, you have your ordinary, you have a deck of cards, uh, which then you pick a card and say, this is where I'm going to hit you, and your opponent picks another card and says, I think you're going to hit me here. And if he guesses the, the uh, your the target you are selecting right you don't deal damage but if he's going wrong you deal damage so it's a very fast game it's also the campaign system and character progression similar to to frostgrave but it's not generic because all characters have names they're all known individuals so there isn't as far as i remember and please correct me if i'm wrong uh, there, there's no generic dumb fighter number one, dumb fighter number two. They all have names, and they're all sculpted more or less all by Pete Clocker, and they're uh, just gorgeous miniatures. And I was really looking forward to seeing him again next month. Was planned for Tactica 2022 in Hamburg, but well, today we received notice that. Guess what? Corona fucked Tactica, and so Tactica 2022 is cancelled, and we will be planning 2023. Huzzah! So again, if you uh, are into your pirate skirmishy, maybe just look up some gameplay videos about it. Uh, Simply, the miniatures are all lovely and could be just for diorama bases. And the game has a very small footprint. I think it's played on a 2x2, two two, but I can't really tell. I, I I personally never played. I watched them play more than once. I gave the rules a read a couple of years ago. But uh... Oh, and one very interesting thing that they do. You don't get to buy a starter box you get to select a starter deal. So basically, uh, the different factions come in uh, small boxes with, I think, five to six miniatures, depending on how strong their characters are. And the starter deals are, you get the rule book, and you select two starter boxes from two different uh, factions. And depending on which ones you choose, your starting point is cheaper or more expensive because they don't uh, make one price for all of them. If you take the, excuse me, if you take, uh, let's say, the two cheapest factions in the game and the rulebook, you will have the most inexpensive way to start Freebooter's Face possible with two factions. And it's all in there to just go out and play which I really, really like. And if you don't want to play the game and just want the minis, then you just buy the minis. And they are doing very interesting one-off sculpts every now and then again, limited miniatures and stuff. So if you're into your collecting weird stuff, they also got you covered. <laughs> uh... Next up would be then... Oh, see, here's... What I meant with uh, Assassin's Creed, and also the terrain you you can make for is always very much a joy to look at, because basically you're using Pirates of the Caribbean and 
run with the theme. I mean, just look at this completely innocent young girl climbing through your window with a weird fetish mask over her face and... Uh, Okay, the, the daggers may be a bit of a turn-off, but then again, maybe you're into it. Yeah, the days, the starting faction. Being able to choose your starting faction is, I think, the most attractive thing in a starting box for me personally. Because I don't want what everybody else has. I want that what drives me to the game. If it accidentally is the... Uh, the thing that's in the box, then great, but if they let me choose, I would rather to have something that's pick and play. Also, shout out at this point at the organization team for Tactica. I can't really uh, guess how hard it is to have planned almost a year and then on the final stretch cancel a, uh, a event that's been planned for so long wild chevy that's a name i don't recognize painted the aragoto from infinity uh why does this scream akira hmm Maybe because the side-skidding red bike has been done to death. <laughs> well, the way he made the base really looks awesome. <laughs> Taffy is still alive and awake, or she's just hit a roadblock with her Age of Sigma army. <laughs> Yeah, so guys, I, I, okay, let me rephrase that. Everybody who's voluntarily planning non-profit events has my sympathies. The, the ones doing it for profit also, but a little bit less. But the ones who just, yeah, basically at this point waste their free time organizing for nothing. The MIDI is cool itself, yeah, but the paint job is stunning. The, the reflection of the object source lighting on this side of the the bike is really, really interesting. And I need to say, because I haven't said it enough today... Die! Hey! hey. Fuck you! Fuck you! Oh, shut up, you cunt! We haven't had those in a long time. Also... You lot awake again? I hope so. <laughs> hey, Z boy the Ballad of the Beige Cowboy. Wild West Exodus. Oh, big pictures now. We like big pictures. Yeah, Danley, the, the water base on the, on the bike really is exceptionally well done. And I wonder if it looks as good in person if we, we had it in your hand and or if it's just some kind of photography magic, but I don't think so. Cooking steak, is she? I hope you'll make enough for everybody, Tuffy, because I'm getting hungry again. So Hazy, that was Hazy, wasn't it? It was Hazy. Doing Wild West Exodus. Which is a game that's... Uh, I like the story idea behind it. But for some reason... Uh, it doesn't really catch me. <laughs> I can't couldn't tell you why. Maybe it's because... the This guy here, the Nikola Tesla looks a bit too much like a space marine or maybe just because it's a system i know that 
barely anybody plays in the local vicinity of me, so there isn't the slightest chance of ever playing a game. Which is the biggest turnoff for me when it comes to will I buy a new game or will I not? I'll just go back to that interesting base and have that on full screen for a moment. Check what's your biggest uh, turn-off or hindrance point when buying a new... or deciding if you want to step into a new game. Panzer saying he doesn't like uh, Wild Wars Exodus because of the models or the rules. I couldn't tell you anything about the rules, to be honest. I looked at the miniatures and, yeah, they're nice, but there's nothing that just... Uh... No, it's it's not grabbing me. Some, some games tend to really come along, grab me by the throat and go, You want me? And I say, yes, but I can't afford you. Case in point, Bot War. Thanks again, Mumble. You. And also, Fantasy Welt, I know you've received your box. Ship my order, you wankers. Yeah, Hazy, I don't think the setting is that bad in itself for Wild West Exodus. It's just. Uh, it, it's like Blood Bowl and Battletech in, in the sense that you need a group of friends to play with. If there's nobody there, there's not much to them. Very British Civil War is niche too, but Panzer likes it. Yeah, but maybe that's because you have a deeper interest in actual history than in, in fantasy, possibly. Yeah, ha ha having a good core that plays is always a, a, a nice way. Uh, Maybe it's on me because I, I find it hard to play with people I don't really usually hang around with on another personal level. So, even though there is a gaming club in our town, and when we can go, I sometimes go there, but rarely did I meet up for, with people to play games. Yeah, Silver Bayonet on the one hand has the major disadvantage at the moment that it's brand new Hazy. I think uh, Silver Bayonet is still in that phase where it's gearing up speed while Wild West Exodus is already, I feel, at the top of its game. I don't think there's much more coming in, 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 uh, in regards of more players. And I'm saying that because I watched the uh, videos that were on, on Tabletop just before Christmas, where they had the uh, the campaign, and yeah, it uh, did do much for me, to, to be honest. And, that's, and it's always makes me feel bad when I see how much work they invest, and I know how hard they actually are working behind the scenes to get things done, and how tight sometimes that timing is or the, the, the timetables because people at companies tend to uh, come in the last second and say yeah we now need three videos by tomorrow <sighs> well 
Is Lost World Exodus going to be a thing? I couldn't tell you. I think we are in a very um, a, a double edged sword type of situation currently in our hobby. On the one side, the modern methods of production, 3D printing, be it at home or for masters, and not as expensive production runs of miniatures have caused a flood of miniatures and games. We are so spoiled for choice. You could... I, I wouldn't want to know how big a gaming store would need to be to accommodate every system that's currently available and running. It, there's just too much. And that leads to a fragmentation of player base, and that in turn leads to people not finding opponents, being frustrated with their games, and then not bothering to play them anymore. And that again brings a smile to one person, and that is Games Workshop. Because sooner or later, people get back to Games Workshop because though there there are players there, they know them. They they choose. Most people choose the devil they know, basically. And I can't can't really play them. I mean, if you don't like the design of the miniatures, that's a very personal thing. That's. Nobody can argue about if you like something or not. If a game system is broken or not, that's a completely different story. But if you just want to have fun with your friends and you uh, settle for a bowl, uh, what's the 40k uh, skirmisher that they are selling at the moment? Um, <gasps> What's it called again? Uh, never mind. You you know what I mean. That then there's a common ground where you can go off and. But for all those niche games, hard. And maybe there will be some cleansing. Dying off of games in the near future. Kill team, yes, Panzer, thank you. Maybe we will see some some games go away. Yeah, Tuffy, uh, you really think people are more interested in playing other games, or are they just bored because Games Workshop had such a big lack of uh, of news at one point in time and then there were some uh, supply issues with uh, uh, this weird fantasy setting Panzer, thank you for being here have a nice one we will hear each other tomorrow don't sleep in I won't do that show alone as well. <laughs> but speaking of tomorrow, tomorrow will always comes faster than we like. And since we uh, also have reached the bottom of the pit, or we could, I guess, do a little refresh. Maybe some Vorsod has added something. I hope not. See, mm, nope, still the last page from Hazy Boy. So, with that, I thank everybody for being here, sticking with me. And yeah, if you would 
you would do me a very solid if you were to have a quick think. If you like to see... Oh no, uh, let me rephrase that. What should we do when Jerry's not here? Because talking about myself is a bit... Uh, not boring, but it's hard because I lack the knowledge Jerry has. So have you, if you have any ideas, drop me a line and uh, I guess next week, unless Jerry uh, is in the studio again, I guess we'll he'll be back. Have a party. Yeah, I would invite you all to a, a group Zoom call, but I know you won't be coming and those two that will come will just show up there. Uh, 3D printed butt plug Pisticuffs, double stun tackle holder. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. I'm going to uh, close the show now. Have a nice day and uh, stay safe, stay sane. Hear you lot tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>